Hi, my name's Alan Smith. I work at Active Solution in Stockholm, Sweden. And in this session, called Graph of Thrones, I'm going to be exploring the graph database capabilities of Cosmos DB using the Game of Thrones as an example. A bit about myself, I describe myself as a developer, trainer, mentor, and evangelist. I'm also an Azure MVP, and I do a lot of work with the community. I have a YouTube channel at uh, Cloudcasts. I also uh, speak at conferences and organize conferences. So I've been involved in organizing the Cloud Burst and the AI Burst conferences, which are free community conferences, which we're hosting in Stockholm, Sweden. So a bit about um, Cosmos DB. Um, I've been working with Cosmos DB for a number of years, using it in a few customer projects and also experimenting at, with Cosmos DB uh, myself. As you know from looking at the other sessions in this conference, uh, Cosmos DB provides us with a global uh, distribution. We've got a fantastic elastic scale out, so our databases can scale very dynamically based on the load we place on them. We've got guarantees on uh, low latency, and we've also got these uh, five well-defined uh, consistency uh, models and comprehensive service level agreements uh, covering the availability and the latency uh, of Cosmos DB. So this is a diagram showing the four database models uh, that we've got, the key value, column, family, documents, and graph and also the various APIs uh, that we can use uh, to connect to Cosmos DB. And in this demo, I'm going to be uh, exploring the graph database model, and I'm going to be exploring using the Gremlin uh, API. And these two uh, work together. If we're using the graph model, uh, we'll be using the Gremlin API to be able to access uh, that. So a bit about the architecture. Uh, if you've worked with, uh, with Cosmos DB uh, using the document model, you may be creating databases, and then within those databases, you generate collections, and you can create your documents within those uh, collections. If we create a Cosmos DB account using uh, the, uh, the graph model, what we're going to be doing is having databases, and within those databases, we're going to be creating graphs. And you can generate multiple databases in a Cosmos DB account, and also, also multiple graphs within a, 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 a database. So what's this, uh, this gremlin uh, creature doing? Um, a lot of the, if you're looking at the different icons that we've got for the various uh, Azure services, they tend to be very functional. Uh, we can see that we've got Azure Functions, we've got Cosmos DB, we've got various uh, SQL uh, databases uh, for that. So the, um, the icons tend to be a, a pictorial, pictorial representation of what the service does. In the open source community, uh, for some reason, they seem to want to use animals and, and creatures uh, to be able to represent uh, the various technologies. You may recognize uh, quite a few of them there. And Gremlin, uh, the guy on the bottom right, is the uh, character that they've chosen for the Gremlin API. And it's actually an open source API that's uh, specifically for focusing on working with graph databases and the graph database model. So onto the, um, the scenario that I'm going to be demonstrating. Uh, I was watching Game of Thrones uh, when it was on. I was kind of addicted uh, to, uh, to uh, watching this all through the, um, the, I think there was eight series of it. And uh, around about the end of series seven, this competition launched in the Neo4j community. Now, Neo4j is a different graph model um, to the uh, Gremlin API, and it offers uh, different, uh, different capabilities. But there's also a lot of similarities uh, in these two models. And in this... Um, community competition there's basically a contest uh, where you could win prizes and the idea was to be able to model uh, the game of thrones world in a graph database using uh, the neo neo4j and the screenshots are showing some of the uh, graph representations of the game of thrones world uh, showing how we can get some insight into how the various characters are connected and also how characters are connected with various um, you know, relationships like marriages, uh, parental uh, relationships, uh, siblings, and also being connected through various uh, houses and religions and, and cultures and so on. It's a very, uh, very rich, uh, complex world that we've got in, uh, in the Game of Thrones. So uh, what I was thinking of doing uh, was actually implementing this using Cosmos DB and also uh, using uh, the Gremlin API. I'd seen many people uh, who've been doing this using, using Neo4j. So what I decided to do uh, was to do this uh, using, using Cosmos DB. Uh, I hadn't seen anybody else uh, doing that. So I don't know if I was the first person to do that, but it was certainly fun uh, to, to explore that. 
So traditionally, working with databases, uh, you may be familiar uh, with relational uh, databases. Things like SQL Server and um, Oracle uh, provide uh, these various uh, tables and, and schema definitions and relationships. And you spend a lot of time, you know, building the tables, designing the tables, thinking about, um, you know, the fourth normal form and all of this stuff, and designing all of the, the relationships within those those databases. With Cosmos DB, we think about non-relational databases. Uh, both in the document and the column family and also in graph we're not really focusing on these kind of a uh, rigid schema uh, with the relationships between the various entities uh, in the uh, databases so the idea of using a, uh, a um, relational database is when we're going to be querying that database, we end up doing lots of joins if we're interested in uh, selecting uh, things. Uh, and we're basically leveraging these relationships in the database. So here I'm using the AdventureWorks sample database in SQL Server. And I'm getting the um, sales per region, um, the uh, sales categories uh, per region. So what I've got to do is go, I've got to select from um, uh, the uh, country region. Uh, region table and the, oh, sorry select from the addresses table and then join onto the sales order join onto the sales order detail and then also join onto the product and the product category and as we start doing these joins uh, the queries uh, do tends to be a bit uh, inefficient and um, so you do uh, tend to hit scalability problems when you're working with a relational database model that's showing the execution graph uh, for that type of query uh, that we can run on that model so if we're thinking about um, taking the Game of Thrones world and uh, we've only got relational databases uh, as our data model, then we're going to think about, well, let's generate a, a table for all of the people. We'll generate a, a table for all of the houses. And then we can start to model uh, and basically place in these, uh, these various characters. So uh, Tyrion Lannister basically serves uh, House Lannister. Varys also serves uh, House Lannister. And we can basically build this model by using a many-to-many -many relationship and creating a table uh, to basically represent uh, those, uh, those relations. However, uh, Varys also serves Tyrion Lannister. This has just broken our relationship model because we don't have um, the structure within our database schema to be able to model that uh, relationship. However, if we're using a graph database, uh, we're going to be defining uh, th the entities like the houses and the characters as uh, vertexes uh, within or vertices uh, within the graph database. And then the relationships are going to be designed use defined using edges. So there, Tyrion Lannister can serve House Lannister, Varys uh, can serve House Lannister, but there's nothing to prevent um, uh, Varys from serving Tyrion. We can just generate uh, that relationship or that edge and, and link those two uh, entities together. So this gives us a very, very flexible model uh, that's going to be uh, very useful uh, for being able to work with more complex uh, relationships. Uh, I think a good example of, of the graph database is something like LinkedIn. You know, you've got a LinkedIn profile and, uh, you know, you work for a certain company, you've got various co-workers, you uh, went to a certain university, you live in a certain town, and you've got connections uh, with certain co-workers and you're a member of certain groups. And all of these, uh, these relationships uh, can be very easily modeled uh, using a graph database and also, more importantly, very efficiently uh, modeled. So uh, in comes Gremlin, um, the graph traversal language that we're going to be using uh, in this demo for actually uh, modeling this. So when we're actually um, doing what we would call a query on a graph database, we don't call them queries, we actually call them traversals. And Gremlin uh, is a graph traversal uh, language that allows us to be able to run these uh, traversals on the graphs and be able to extract uh, information uh, from that. So we have a sequence uh, of steps and they can be uh, potentially uh, nested. And each step is going to perform an atomic operation on the uh, data stream. So we can do things like mapping, filtering, and then various side effect things like sorting and, and counting and stuff. And we'll see all of these as I run through the example queries in the, in the database. Now, I really don't like the term NoSQL um, because NoSQL is really describing that a system uh, does not support the SQL programming language. Um, I prefer using non-relational. So think about the document database in Cosmos DB. It's a non-relational database, but we do use SQL uh, to be able to query that. However, I do think uh, NoSQL is appropriate when we're using uh, the uh, Gremlin API. Because if we're doing a, using a relational model, we're going to be uh, building up a query like this uh, to be able to select from um, you know the various relationships if we're interested in, in loyalties and various people. Whereas in Gremlin, uh, we do something like this. Uh, we do g.v, Tyrion, dot out, serves. 
And what I'm looking for is uh, basically anybody who is serving uh, Tyrion. And I'm basically able to build up that relationship in a very, very simple and very efficient uh, query. So, um, first step was to gather the data uh, for the Game of Thrones. Uh, it is uh, incredibly complex. There's a lot of stuff going on uh, in the TV series. So what I did was I used the Game of Thrones uh, wiki site. And here we can see uh, the information on the character of, of Jon Snow. We get all of this uh, information uh, pr provided in the wiki for all of the characters within, uh, within Game of Thrones. So what I did was I used a technique called screen scraping to be able to take this information and to be able to get the information into a machine digestible format. And I chose JSON uh, to uh, represent the information. So the screen scraper uh, will basically go in and it would extract the name, uh, the father and the mother of the character, the siblings, uh, the, the religion uh, and so on. And uh, you can see and it's basically extracted out uh, the, the various uh, data, like the titles and allegiances and so on. And what we can then use is use this JSON uh, to actually drive the data input. So it's kind of a two-stage process. The first stage is to extract all the information from the wiki and get it into one really, really big JSON file. And then uh, we're going to pass that JSON file and run the queries to be able to get the information into uh, Cosmos DB. So this is uh, what the query at language will look like when I'm using the Gremlin API to get the information into uh, Cosmos DB. I'm adding a vertex, which is a character, uh, which is Jon Snow. I'm then adding um, the uh, relations to Jon Snow. So what I'm doing is basically selecting that uh, Rhaegar Targaryen is father of Jon Snow. Uh, Lena Stark is mother of Jon Snow. This is from th Series 7, uh, by the way. So I think that's what we knew in Series 7. Uh, no spoilers, but I think that data did change a bit in, in Series 8. We can also uh, drop on the allegiances. Jon Snow serves House Stark and House Targaryen and the Night's Watch. Jon Snow is from the Northman and Jon Snow worships the old gods of the forest. So we can basically add on uh, all of these at these various relationships and characters to be able to build up uh, the whole graph of the, the Game of Thrones world. And this is kind of showing, uh, you know, the different uh, allegiances and connections uh, that we will have on uh, Jon Snow. So building up the actual uh, Graph of Thrones model, I'm going to jump out into the Azor portal now. And uh, I do have a pre-prepared database, but I'm going to create a new one anyway, uh, just to show you how this, this process uh, works. So I have my uh, Cosmos DB account, and this has been created using the Gremlin uh, API. And if I go into the Data Explorer, um, I've basically created a DB of Thrones test, uh, which I have uh, populated with a test data. But I'm going to generate another database just to show you how that process uh, works. So I drop on a new graph. I'm going to create a new database called DB of Thrones. I'm going to um, select a new graph, which is called Graph of Thrones. And for the partition key, I'm going to use key. Uh, uh, which is going to be coming from the actual data. I'm going to leave the auto scaling on uh, with a max of 4,000 RUs. The reason I do this is um, the data input process is fairly heavy. We're going to be running at lots of transactions. So I want the um, Cosmos uh, DB uh, database to actually um, scale out, uh, or scale up, and be able to actually meet uh, the, any capacity that I want to, to throw at it. So that should be fine uh, for that, and I should be able to create uh, that graph. And whilst that's uh, churning away, I'm going to jump into Visual Studio. I'm going to need to, I think I've got these settings uh, set. I think I've spelt this correctly, DB of Thrones and Graph of Thrones. And I can just show you the code that's going to pass the, the data. So um, Game of Thrones edited.json. Uh, this basically um, has some cleanup work. Uh, when I uh, got the raw data out, which is this Game of Thrones.json, um, there were some things I needed to actually uh, change and modify. So there's usually a, a bit of a cleanup when you've got to do a, a data import here. But here we can see the actual JSON file for all of the characters. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see there's about 9,500 lines of uh, data here, listing uh, all of the characters that I could extract out of the, um, the actual wiki site and all of the, the uh, relationships and so on. And what the console application is going to do is to basically pass through um, that JSON file and build up the actual queries that we're going to insert into the Cosmos DB database. So I'm just going to uh, drop back to the portal, and uh, you can see hopefully that this has been uh, created. We've got DB of Thrones, and uh, within Graph of Thrones, 
we've got an empty graph. If I execute this query, you can see that no results are coming back from that query. Uh, the graph is empty. So hopefully uh, I should be able to run my console application and get that data import running into the database. So I'm just going to uh, run uh, the, the console app. And uh, here we can see that we're pushing in all of the character data and uh, there's going to be quite a, a lot of uh, characters. We'll see some information statistics later on on uh, sort of how large the actual database is, but uh, th there goes all of the actual character information. A couple of exceptions there. Um, I not sure why those uh, those were occurring. I maybe need to go in and, and uh, troubleshoot uh, those. Now we're pushing in the allegiances. We're pushing in the cultures, the religions. And now we're dropping in all of the actual uh, relations. And there's going to be a lot of these edges uh, that we're going to be adding, linking the various uh, characters to the other characters within the Game of Thrones world. OK, so uh, whilst that's churning away, I'm just going to drop, drop back to the portal and I should be able to start running a few basic queries on the um, on the actual Game of Thr Thrones. If I actually run g.v now, we should see that we've got some information here. I'm just going to minimize these uh, these windows here. So we've got a bit more um, space to actually view the, uh, the actual uh, graph here. What we can see uh, when we're querying this is we're getting uh, the main character of Eddard Stark and we're also getting the relationships to other characters and we're able to uh, explore this model and bringing out the other uh, relationships uh, from these. I might just zoom out of the portal a bit see if I can get this in uh, something that's a bit easier to, uh, to digest. So as we're basically uh, navigating this we, we have this model uh, now uh, that we can actually use to explore uh, the Game of Thrones world. The input is now complete. You can see there that all of the uh, the actual data ha has been uh, pushed pushed in there. So uh, we can now uh, start to explore this this graph model. So querying this is bringing back all of the characters. I can select any character within the Game of Thrones world. That character is going to be uh, displayed, and then we can go on to House Mormont. Uh, we can expand House Mormont, and we can see the different. Um, characters that also serve House Mormont along with uh, John Mormont who I've selected. If I expand the properties again uh, we can see uh, all of the people who are basically serving that particular house. Now typically when you're building an application you're not going to be using this uh, graphical view uh, to explore uh, the Game of Thrones world so what we're going to be doing is looking at uh, the actual queries uh, that we're going to be running in this uh, window here. So uh, I'm going to look at uh, some of the actual data. Um, G.V is going to select all of the vertices uh, within the graph. I can also do a G.V.count, which is going to tell me how many uh, vertices uh, we've got. So there's 872 uh, vertices. And then if we want to look at the edges, uh, we can do G.E count. And we can see that there's 2,095 connections uh, between each. What I can also do is on the uh, vertices, uh, if I go to g.v, I can uh, look at the um, label. And then do a group count on the label and run that query. And what this is doing uh, is telling us that we've got 660 characters, 164 allegiances, 38 cultures and 10 religions. If we look at the edges and do a group count on them. We can see uh, the numbers of the different uh, edges. So there is 119 uh, marriages in there. We've got uh, 193 is father of, 925 um, uh, serfs. So you can basically see all of these these differences uh, that, that we've got, all, all the ways that these, these characters are connected. What we can also do is do queries uh, to select um, the what you know, what are the relationships between these various uh, characters? So if I go to uh, g.v, I'm actually going to paste this in. If I just query for Eddard Stark. This is basically bringing up uh, the JSON, uh, which is coming back, which is describing uh, Eddard uh, Stark. So that's querying that particular vertex, the vertex with that particular name. And if I want to uh, find out uh, who his children are, I can look at the outbound relationship from Eddard Stark and uh, I can ask uh, for is father off. So what this is bringing back is Eddard Stark's children. And you can see we've got Sansa, Arya, Rob, Bran, Rickon and Brandon uh, coming back here. 
If I change this relationship from an out relationship to an in relationship, then I'm going to be looking for Eddard Stark's father, which is coming back as Rickard Stark. So I can now take Rickard Stark, drop Rickard Stark in there, change this back to an out, and then we've got Rickard Stark's children. And you can also combine these queries together. So if I want Rickard Stark's grandchildren, I can just copy paste that query there. And what we're now is looking for Rickard Stark out is father of, and then for all of those nodes, uh, we're looking for out is father of as well. So you can come back here and uh, you can see the list of grandchildren uh, from uh, Rickard Stark. So it allows us to be able to explore all of these various relationships uh, within uh, the, the Game of Thrones world. So if I'm going to go back to uh, Eddard Stark, and what I'm going to do is to look at who Eddard Stark serves. So I'm going to basically um, go out and then go serves. Run that query there. And you can see that Eddard Stark serves House Stark and House Baratheon of King's Landing. Now what we can do, uh, because this query is returning House Stark and House Baratheon of King's Landing, what I can do is basically uh, drop on. I keep calling these queries, they're actually traversals. This traversal uh, is bringing back those two results. If I now go in and drop this onto the end of the traversal. This is going to return, this bit is going to return these two entities. And then what I'm looking at is, well, who also serves these two entities? So from these two entities, who has an inbound relationship to serving those entities? So if I run that query, this is showing us everybody who serves alongside Eddard Stark. Uh, so is connected to Eddard Stark through, um, you know, the two entities. Um, they basically serve, uh, serve the same entities there. So what we're doing now is kind of exploring uh, the uh, relationships within Game of Thrones to find out, uh, you know, do these characters have quite a lot in common with them? Do they serve alongside each other? There's some more complex things. What I'm going to do here is just drop in this uh, traversal here. And this one is going to look for the most influential organizations. So I'm looking for G.V. I'm selecting any, uh, any all of the vertices. And they have an outbound relationship, which is serfs. And then I'm doing a group count and ordering by the value descending. So what this is going to show us is, um, you know, which institutions within uh, the Game of Thrones world have the most people serving them. So House of Stark, House Stark comes up at the top uh, with 86, and then we've got House Targaryen with, with 84. And if we scroll down, uh, we'll see, uh, you know, the lesser houses within the Game of Thrones world, and uh, you get right down to the bottom, and there's some of them where there's only one character uh, that's actually House Humble, only has, has one character that has an allegiance to House Humble. So Humble by name and by name. Uh, nature. Okay, so my kind of idea by this, um, the way that these uh, graph, graph databases are used within um, things like, like LinkedIn is to be able to do things like friend recommendations. So I thought it might be fun uh, to see if we can do a friend recommendation within uh, the Game of Thrones. So uh, I'll round off my demo uh, just by dropping in this traversal there. And what I'm doing is taking John Erin. I'm looking at both the inbound and the outbound relationships, but I'm limiting the results to only characters. Only characters are going to uh, be present in friend recommendations. And then I'm doing the sorting to basically sort all of the characters in the Game of Thrones world that have the most in common with John Erin. John Aaron comes out top. He has the most connections with himself. But then we've got Peter Baelish uh, coming out with 10 shared connections, uh, Robin Aaron and Lisa Aaron here. So this is kind of like a friend's recommendation from Game of Thrones. Peter Baelish is coming out top. I would be scared if um, anything was recommending Peter Baelish as, uh, as the best friend. But let's drop in, him in anyway and, uh, and see uh, what comes out. And it's uh, saying John Erin is, um, you know, got 10 uh, connections. Those are 10 shared connections. And we can go down and find these other uh, characters. Uh, we can take Cersei Lannister if I can find her. And we can drop her in and see what her friend recommendations will be. And then we've got Jamie Lannister coming out uh, as the top um, friend uh, recommendation there. So that was quite accurate if you do watch the, um, the Game of Thrones uh, series. So, um, takeaways on this. Um, 
if you've been working with traditional models, uh, such as regular relational databases, or maybe working with the document model in Cosmos DB, the graph model is very, uh, very uh, different. Um, I try to think to the adage, you know, uh, if your only tool is a hammer, uh, then every problem is a nail. Um, we do now have these uh, these graph capabilities available in Cosmos DB. And if the challenge that you're trying to solve uh, seems to be very graph related, it could be suited uh, to working with this graph model. Definitely worth exploring and working uh, with this. This is the first thing that I built on the um, Gremlin API in Cosmos DB. It was a bit of a challenge for me to get my head around how the graph databases worked, but it was uh, it was wasn't um, wasn't too difficult uh, to get the actual model uh, working. Most of the challenges were related to the the, uh, the data import, and we are using the graph model at my company in a couple of uh, customer uh, solutions. So I definitely recommend uh, you know spin up an instance of Cosmos DB, run through some tutorials, and experiment uh, with uh, with the uh, the uh, graph model and and see how it works for you. So thanks for, thanks for listening to my session. Uh, my name is Alan Smith. I work for Active Solution, and I do have some content up on YouTube if you want to go and check that out. Enjoy the rest of the conference.